Hello and welcome to The Voice of Life. This is Roger Hutchins and Cheryl. And uh, we are here today because God has told us to share some things with you. And uh, this is uh, uh, lesson two on uh, uh, the voice within or the witness within. And we want you to uh, uh, stay with us through the, through the series. If you miss some, you can always go back on, on Facebook and, and uh, um, Twitter and YouTube. That They'll actually be on YouTube. So if you subscribe to the channel, uh, then it'll notify you when there's new lessons that come up, new messages that come up. And uh, we want to encourage you to do that because God has packed us full and, and stirred our hearts that the body of Christ today needs to hear the voice of God like never before. And not only hear uh, the voice of God, but we need to learn to be obedient to that voice. And, uh, you know, not, and that's not a condemnation. That's just a direction that God's taking us in. Uh, and as a prophetic voice, uh, in, in the world today, I want to just stir up the gift of God that's within you. There, some of you have been walking around packed full of the power of God and not knowing how to use it. Well, let me help you. Let, let the Spirit of God in me, in me begin to help you and me and Cheryl uh, because the gifting's in us. I'm, I'm, I'm a prophet, prophet of God. Uh, I do have an apostolic edge on my uh, prophetic anointing but Cheryl is a teacher and uh, you're going to tell that as our delivery I, I've come forth as a preacher many times and and want to shoot it on out there but uh, but the teacher uh, we, we want you to hear it and that's why we team up together and come to you so we can present the word with a with a full anointing of, of the prophet of God and with the teacher uh, beginning to pick out the details and beginning to uh, show us uh, that God is doing something magnificent in the earth just like he did with the early church. The power of God is still here. While we are, uh, are, are so uh, moved by the world many times, I do not understand. But before we get on into the word, we're going to go, uh, if, you, if you've got your Bibles and your notebooks, I want to encourage you to get them. Uh, hopefully you've been sitting down with us uh, uh, looking at the scriptures yourself because when you put your eyes on it then it begins to come alive to you you hear the word of god and then there's an inward witness in you there's three things there's there's uh first of all uh you see it on the paper you hear the word of god faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god uh, and then there's an inward witness in your spirit uh, that you are the children of god that you are those that god's anointed uh for this hour and for this time god we have come into this uh earthly realm to begin to deliver creation and i believe that as you and i begin to activate the gift that was in us that is in us uh, then we can affect the world and there's some changes that god wants to bring forth now if you're listening and you don't know the lord jesus we're about to pray and we want to ask you if you will uh, just call on the name of the Lord. The scripture says any, anybody that calls on the name of the Lord, uh, that, that believes on the name of the Lord, and they confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, they shall be saved. When you do that, you're born again, you're part of the body of Christ, and then something happens. You begin to see things differently. You begin to look at things differently. You begin to walk a different life. You say, well, what if I stumble and fall? Well, if you stumble and fall, he'll help you get back up. But, but let me tell you right now that God is able to do far above anything that we could ask or think. So right now, let's pray. Let's ask God to move on your behalf. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we pray today, we thank you, God, that you already hear us. You know uh, the thoughts and the intents of our heart, and we ask you uh, for that one, God, that has never been born again, that, that uh, she would call upon your name right now and just ask you to come in, into her heart. God, just ask you to be her Savior, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and now confess with her mouth uh, the Lord Jesus. Father, and I just thank you, Lord. I just specifically feeling a... A, a, a female person that God's dealing with right now. And Father, we thank you for your salvation grace in her. And now she's a part of the body of Christ and she can enjoy all things that we enjoy as the body of Christ. We give you glory. We give you praise for it in, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Well, we, we have uh, just, just a quick moment or two. I don't want to go back over the, every lesson every time, but just for a quick moment, we've 
We've been reading in John the 14th chapter, and Jesus says, I'm going to send you another comforter. Uh, and he says, uh, and he, he says uh, that uh, you, the world can't see this comforter, uh, but you have know him because he's walked with you. In other words, he's saying, I've walked with you. I'm going to be in you. And so that's what he's talking about as we go into Acts, the second chapter. Uh, I'm going to read the first couple of verses, and then um, I'm going to let Cheryl begin to share some things that I think will help you make it uh, a little more clear of what's happening. Uh, as they've received the instruction from Jesus about the Holy Spirit to tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. But in, in uh, the second chapter of the book of Acts, in the first verse, and he says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one accord. Uh, that, that means they, were, they had come together in one mind, and their mind was in obedience to what Jesus had already spoken to them. Uh, they were in agreement. How, how we long for the church to come together with the one mind, the mind of Christ, is actually uh, the only way we can come together, and, and in one place. See, sometimes God brings us together uh, so that we, we can get the mind of Christ and we can begin to uh, bring forth, and actually they mean the same thing in, in one accord. Actually, mean in the, the accord itself means not only in one mind, but, but in one mind and in one place. Now, that's why God brings us together at times, because when we come together, there is a power of agreement that begins to work in us. What brings that power of agreement? It's not man effort. See, that's, that's very important to what Jesus is saying uh, because it's not through our efforts. We can create denominations, which has already been done. We can create uh, different uh, uh, things, uh, different ideas and opinions. See, the, the, the gospel is not about creating another doctrine. It's about agreeing with the doctrine of Christ and the doctrine uh, of what God's already put in the earth. Now, let's read the second verse of the second chapter of the book of Acts. And he says, And suddenly there came a sound. So, say sound. Sound. Because the sound was not only from without, it was from without, but it's not only from without, but it's from within. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Now, um, the, the, the word says it, there was a, it was like a violent wind. And whenever I read that, I looked, uh, I looked at the, uh, uh, at the Strong's words there, and it said a violent wind. And I remembered uh, that uh, Jesus has said uh, that the violent take it by force. So I, I'd always been confused by that a little bit because uh, I'm thinking that violent implies a very uh, haughty spirit, a very, you know, but malice, or, malice something. or something. But but that's not what he's talking about. It, it's like a, a might that came into that, that room that day, and it was like a mighty rushing wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. So um, uh, the, the word um, filled here is actually filled up, or actually like completing or finishing. In other words, there were people in that room that weren't complete. There were people in that room that had walked for Jesus for three and a half years, but they weren't complete. There are people listening to this, uh, to this program today that uh, have walked with Jesus maybe all your life, maybe 30, 40, 50 years, but there's something not complete. And see, what's not complete is exactly what's happening here on the day of Pentecost. There came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind and filled their house. I remember uh, as, a, as a young teenage boy, uh, I was called to preach. I knew I was called to preach. I, I went on the streets and, and I'd preach at the bus stops in Winston-Salem, North Carolina and, and uh, to the, those that were waiting at the bus stops and to the winos and the different ones out there. And I preached John 3.16. But one day while I was on that street corner, uh, there came a little woman. I mean, she might have been 100 pounds. 
uh, and she was shorter than I am, and that's pretty short. Uh, and she pointed a little bony finger at my nose and said, uh, you're going to get the Holy Ghost. Well, I didn't know what she was talking about. I was a little Baptist boy. And she said, you're going to get the Holy Ghost. And I didn't even know what she was talking about. So, but, but, but every time I'd lay down after that to go to sleep at night, there that little bony finger was and said, you're going to get the Holy Ghost. So I got in the Word of God and started looking up. I started reading uh, in the book of Acts how that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And whenever I, I stood up in that, uh, I'd been asked to preach in that, uh, in that church I was in who didn't believe in speaking in tongues and so forth. But when I opened my mouth, English would not come out. And, uh, you know, some people got upset about that. But that wasn't me. It was God uh, filling me and letting me know, uh, 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 completing me. See, and so... Uh, this house, your house needs to be filled up with the power of the Holy Ghost. My house, your, uh, Cheryl's house, we need to be full and complete. Anything God started, he said he would finish. And I thank God he's finishing the work in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, it, it's complete. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the wind. Why the wind? Cheryl, can you talk a little bit about that and... Share with us what you got about the wind, or, or I think you... Well, actually, what I had found was in John 20, and it's a lot of people have confused John 20, 22 with um, being filled with the Spirit mm -hmm. as and speaking in tongues and all that sort of thing. Let's read it. It's John 20. We're going to start at verse 21 and read 21 and 22 and this is after Jesus had been resurrected and he appeared in the room where the disciples were mm -hmm. verse 21 says then said Jesus to them again peace be unto you as father has sent me even so send I oh, you yes and when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, this particular breathing here was an outward thing. Um, and it was where it's the same type of breath that's used in Genesis where it says that God breathed, the Lord God breathed into Adam and mm -hmm. he became a living soul. So this breathing was to enable them to be born again. Something new, a new breath of God to come into the human being. Now, um, the word sin there, when Jesus said, the Father sent me, so send I you. That means set apart or to send out. So he was preparing these disciples before the day of Pentecost, because he was getting ready to send them out. He set them apart, and then he was getting ready to send them out before they could be filled or baptized into the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. or we should say the Holy Spirit coming to dwell actually in a human body, like it did in Jesus then they first had to have a spirit that could receive that. They had to receive that breath of God to be awakened to the Amen. things of God, to be able to believe, and that sort of thing. Amen. That, that's why whenever we, come on, see, when, when the program comes on, uh, that's why I invite you, if you're not born again, to become born again, because the first thing you've got to experience is that breath of God inside and you're accepting Jesus Christ as Lord. Then uh, there's a next step uh, that, that is available to you uh, that you receive the power of God in you. Uh, just like I said about being on the street corners, there was a hunger, there was even a desire, uh, and, and maybe even an anointing uh, to preach the word. But whenever the Holy Ghost came, then God took it to another level. There was the expression, not only of a little Baptist boy that desired to preach, but now there's an expression of him who is within you. Uh, greater is he that's in you. I'm getting ahead of myself because we've got that uh, in the scriptures. But, but 
now it's Christ in us beginning to do the work. It's still Jesus doing the work because no man can do these works except God be with him. So now, uh, like, like Cheryl said, the first breath uh, we want you to receive is that breath of your salvation. Jesus breathed on them and then they came to a saving grace of God. And the same thing, I, I, I pray today that you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but don't stop there. That's, that's uh, the beginning, but you need the, the power, the anointing to go forth as an overcomer in life, that, that your faith, God stir your faith uh, up, and I want to get sidetracked here, but, uh, but, but, Holy Ghost works through your faith, just like your salvation uh, comes whenever you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And now your faith begins to work and you begin to activate not just you in the earth, not just your preaching, but you begin to activate the power of the living God. Somebody's stirring right now. God's stirring somebody's spirit right now because you've had a desire uh, to, to do the things of God, but you've lacked the, um, the, the power uh, to, to be steady, to, to be uh, focused. But I'm going to tell you, God, keep listening to this word. Keep listening to this series because God is going to do some powerful things in you that will stay with it. Amen. Anything else you want to? Um, yeah, I just want to say this. The, the breathing where Jesus mm -hmm. breathed in John 20, 22, it means to puff or blow at like that. And where it says in Acts 2.2, 2, heaven is of a rushing mighty wind. The wind there is like a breeze, but it also means the breath of life. Oh, so hallelujah. you're taking it into a deeper, something that's deeper. It's not just a at you, but then something comes oh, into hallelujah. you that breaks open that life of God. Glory to God. <laughs> Did you hear that? My, my, my. When the Holy Ghost comes, it begins to, uh, it, it, it blows and activates that life that's in you. Yes. Amen. Thank God he brought us life. But now that life, he, he doesn't want to, he doesn't just want to give us barely enough for us to get by. What are you talking about? Well, let me tell you about bearing fruit. You've heard people talk about, I want to see if they're going to bear any fruit or not of their salvation. But do you know, uh, a tree, a normal tree, an apple tree, pear tree, orange tree, whatever. Uh, do you know why it bears fruit? It gets more life inside of it than it can contain. And that, that sap comes up at the right moment, the right time, the right, right season, and it gets more life in it than it can bear. So what does it do? It begins to bring forth that fruit and that fruit that's, uh, that, that, that's in us is an expression of an abundance of life. Amen. That's what you, I, that's what I want to do, Cheryl, is, is bring forth an abundance of life. I don't want to just have enough God for me to get by and make it to heaven. You know, many Christians today, that's their attitude. I want to just, oh, I'm saved. Praise God, I'm going to heaven. And, and I can just sit back and wait for those pearly gates to open. But that's not uh, our purpose in the earth. Thank God for the salvation. Thank God, if, uh, you know, that, that whenever uh, uh, the time comes, uh, if we go by the way of the grave or whatever, whenever the time comes, thank God uh, we'll be received. But let me tell you something. Uh, God wants us to bear fruit while we're here. And what happens to fruit? Fruit is something that you don't eat yourself. If you're the tree, you know the tree don't eat the fruit. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's the people around us that eat the fruit. So if we can bear fruit and let that fruit come forth, what is it? It's the life of God. Uh, we want to give that to somebody else. That's what we're trying to do with these uh, with this broadcast is we want to give you the word of God that is in us because we know that it's life. It's it's. Uh, we I get to the place I want to, uh, oh, God's stirring something in me and I know it's got to come out. 
Why? Because God is God is filling me, and I know if I can deliver it, if I can bring it forth, let it let it come forth. It's like that out of my out of your belly, the Jesus said, shall flow rivers of living water. If you believe on Him, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Uh, and and that's that's what's happening here is that that now the the rivers begin to flow, the wind is begin to blow. There's a rushing mighty wind uh, that begins to wake us up and now God prepares us, uh, the, the, these 120 in this upper room that have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they don't just sit down then. They get up and the, the, the same works that Jesus did begins to work through them. Uh, they begin to, to heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out devils and, and do all those things. They begin, but it happens as they preach the gospel. And that's what, uh, you know, so somebody said, well, I'm not called to preach, but can I tell you, you can open your mouth. You can open your mouth and, and, and let something come out to somebody uh, to let them know that Jesus is still alive today. Amen. Anything? Well, there's so much that's rolling through me on the fruit thing. That, Flow with it. <laughs> we have uh, blackberry bushes, and one of them has gotten real tall, taller than I am, and I'm pretty tall. And we've had She's a, pretty and tall. <laughs> we've had a lot of blackberries this year. And... Um, <clears throat> So what I discovered is the longer that the blackberries are attached to the vine, the riper they get and the sweeter they get. But then when it comes time to pick them, it's sort of a race to get to them before the birds do. <laughs> and we're working on that. But um, once the blackberry is good and right and sweet, we pluck it off and then we eat it and it becomes a part of us. So when we are that vine, we're the branch connected to that vine, Christ, and then um, as we stay connected to the vine, fruit, the scripture talks about the fruit or of the Holy Spirit. I like to say evidence that there's a Holy Spirit dwelling in us because that's what it is. If the Holy Spirit Amen. dwells in us, then there should be an evidence of that. And as that evidence matures, now if we, if we go and get a blackberry off the vine and it's part black and part red, it's going to be bitter. Mm -hmm. So, Amen. and you know, we can do that and sweeten them up with something. But as we stay connected to the vine, Jesus Christ, then we become that branch that can blossom out like the blackberries do and someone can come pick of our fruit. Now, if we're a new Christian, someone may still pick of our fruit. Yeah. And it might be a little bitter because we haven't matured enough in that area, but it's no matter because the Holy Spirit can sweeten it, He can make it work Amen. all right, and He can nourish another person with that. So as Roger was saying, don't be afraid to open your mouth. You may not know everything right now, but share what you do know. Amen. And God will take it and use it. Amen. You know, I just heard the Holy Spirit say to me while she was talking, we need to quit letting other voices be our voice. You know, it's like uh, like on, on, on your Facebook page when somebody else says something instead of uh, we just click like or whatever and and, uh, and all. But, but we need to be a voice and not an echo of what somebody else is saying. Many people are so gullible. Yeah, I said it, gullible. And, and vulnerable to to what other people say because they don't have uh, they don't want to have an opinion they don't you know it's not our opinion I my opinion every time I think I've got a good opinion uh, God will come along and and and, and uh, actually turn it around to His word so I want you to be, believe the word of God today and I want you to open your mouth uh, be a voice. Uh, for, for the Lord. Now watch what happens in verse 3 of Acts 2 here. He says, And there appeared unto them, and I, I get the picture, there appeared unto them, this, this 120 in the upper room. So that, that tells me it, it, when it came, it appeared unto them. Not every, not the, the whole world, it appeared unto them. 
Uh, and if we'll read later, we'll find out that they heard, but they didn't say anything about they saw these cloven tongues. But there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Now, first of all, I want you to notice what the Holy Ghost affected first. The Holy Ghost affected, first of all, their tongue, their speech, what they said. And because God's giving them another language. Now, it wasn't Chaldean or Hebrew or, or Greek or any of those languages that were in the land in that day. It was another language. It was uh, tongues. Now, they, they did, some of them, speak in the language of the people that were, that were around them as they uh, began to preach that day. But cloven tongues as of fire. In other words, the fire is, uh, God is a consuming fire. Well, you've got to identify God as that fire. Fire comes to purge and to cleanse and to bring forth, uh, to bring forth a, a newness, to recreate and bring forth a newness of life. Uh, God's a consuming fire, and the scriptures also says God is love. So I associate those two together. And it sat upon each of, each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak. See, there's something happening. Why? Because God's got to loosen their tongue because they've got to go forth. <coughs> Excuse me. And they've got to go forth and they've got to do what he's already told them to do, which is to go forth into all the world and preach the gospel. So what is he doing? He's loosening their tongue. He's setting them, uh, setting the fire alive in them that they can begin to speak with the authority and the purpose of God uh, with tongues and as the spirit gave them utterance. Now, it's not us making up some kind of uh, mumbo jumbo it's, it's the spirit speaking through us and anyhow that we can even pray in the spirit because the spirit knows how we ought to pray whenever we don't uh, and it's a very useful uh, very useful to us to bring us through those times whenever we don't know how to walk we're being led by the spirit and God is doing mighty special things with us I want to say one thing about the word set. Um, there appeared unto them cloven, t cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of uh -huh. them. I was really interested in that word set. It means to sit down or okay. to set, S-E-T, or to a point. But it also means, I love this, <laughs> to confer a kingdom on. Oh, wow. Mama. So something magnificent was happening in this upper room. All kinds of things were going on. First they heard the sound, and that sound came from heaven. Then they experienced the rushing mighty wind as the sound got bigger and bigger. Whoa. Whoa. And then the whole house was filled. Then cloven tongues of fire. I mean, this wasn't just an everyday normal occurrence. And all that is going on here, a kingdom was being conferred on. So, Cheryl, when John the Baptist came and, and came out to, and he, to, to baptize Jesus and baptize him there on the Jordan, he pointed at Jesus and said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. So now, wow, I, I took notes myself, y'all. I hope you got your notepads. <laughs> uh, so now... Uh, as, as the Holy Ghost is being given to the, the disciples, to the 120 in the upper room, and right on, and now unto us in this hour, uh, he took that same kingdom that John the Baptist was speaking about, and he conferred it. Well, you remember Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. Mm -hmm. That's the first time they'd ever heard those words. Nobody under the old covenant spoke about a kingdom being within us. So here is exactly what happened. The kingdom of God was conferred on them and came within them. Something supernatural was going on here. Amen. So so we are carriers of the same kingdom that Jesus was that carrying Jesus whenever the carried. kingdom was at hand. Yes. So now the, that would mean the kingdom of heaven is still at hand. That's right. And it's at hand because we are actually 
uh, walking in that kingdom. Our time's up and we got to pray and close out for today. Uh, we get started, but we'll be back and you need to join us. Father, in the name of Jesus, let that kingdom be conferred and let the Holy Spirit be, begin to fill your people with the power and the presence of God like never before. We thank you for it and we ask you, God, to do mighty things uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. We want to encourage you to stay with us as we go. I don't know how many sessions this is going to go, uh, but that was lesson two of uh, the the in, inward witness, the inward voice. And uh, we want you to take notes, read your Bible, look at it. God bless you. Thank you.